Yes, but I have a point which is also uh, would be picking up little four a. So I can either make that one down or come because it's a sort of it's a it's a sweeping up point I wanted to make, which is relevant to what I wanted to say about little four. I'm happy to move on um, and, and draw it to a general conclusion. So in relation to question four, should the policy make specific reference to supporting the provision of services which should enable greater participation in football, for example in respect of the football associations, disabled persons, females, youth, and veteran categories and for purely recreational purposes? and um, should explore the text and reference to the tenant strategy. Um, in relation to um, whether the policy should make reference to supporting the provision of facilities that would enable greater and wider participation in football, um, the answer is yes, um, there should be reference uh, in the policy to the need to uh, to that objective, both in the Cambridge and South Cambridge policy. Um, and this uh, is, there is evidence, with the, the evidence over the years has identified um, the need to support broader participation in football, uh, and that is absolutely in line with paragraph 73 of the framework. Um, which identifies the important contribution to health and well-being of communities that sport and recreation can provide. Um, and it's supported uh, by the work of the Cambridge United Community Trust, um, who we represent in relation to uh, the Cambridge Community <coughs> Stadium proposal and the Sport Cambridge Sporting Village. They're a charity operated by Cambridge United Football Club to deliver a range of sporting and community activities uh, to young people but also to people uh, with uh, disabilities um, in the Cambridge area. Uh, and they support the Cambridge um, uh, Community Stadium and Cambridge Sporting Village project specifically because there is a shortage of facilities um, and great demand from for greater participation in football. And I think that really brings us back to the to the key issue here um, that a range of needs for in much improved sporting facilities to serve different sectors of the community have been identified over the past 10 years in the extensive evidence base that is um, um, before the um, hearing. But there isn't one policy that plans positively for these uh, significant pieces of sporting and community infrastructure, uh, particularly if paragraphs 813 and 814 and the other changes to the South Cambridge local plan um, are implemented. And so that brings us to um, the final question, should the sporting text make reference to the planning pitch strategy in this context? Um, and the problem uh, with referring to the playing pitch strategy and to the indoor sports facility strategy in the club, um, is that they've been produced um, well after the actual submission of the club, and they haven't been consulted upon. And moreover, although they identify a range of sporting needs, the only change to the plan councils have considered it appropriate to make in response to the claim to these two strategy documents is to delete the reference to the community stadium. So the council's response in terms of how they write their policy has not been to um, provide the 
specific policies, recognising a whole host of needs across the major sports, um, and getting to grips with how to plan positively for them, their response has been to delete uh, reference to the community stadium, where, as we've established, or our, our position is, there is no evidence that there is no evidence at all that there is no need uh, for the community stadium. In fact, there's, there's plenty of evidence that there is a significant need for the community stadium. So, um, we would see little point in uh, the sporting text making reference to the benefit strategy. Um, and we go back to our uh, overarching concern about the plan that uh, paragraphs 8, 13, and 8, 14 um, should be um, should be reinstated, and the South Cambridge policy to deal with sporting provision should be much more closely. Aligned, if not the same as the Cambridge local plan when addressing and planning for sub regional facilities. Thank you. Um, picking up the uh, reference to various. Ms. 
infrastructure items to be prepared funded through section 106. So the policy is appropriate, the supporting tax is appropriately flexible regarding which mechanism should be applied, and the exact should that depend on the adopted SIL when it went completed. And then what is appropriate in drafting section 106, we think it's actually the right institute to keep those records uh, flexible at this stage to be able to adapt to those, those circumstances on the SPA plan. No, I disagree. I don't understand the answer. I'm sure you must understand what it's going to get to fund through SIL and what it's going to fund through section 106. Uh, once, um, once this plan is adopted, once the inspector Inspectors have made their um, recommendations, and that will fix what you're going to do through the SIL. Um, I, I don't understand this, this issue about why the council feels it needs to obtain more flexibility. The local plan will determine, the policies of the local plan will determine um, what it can see through to the infrastructure. Just 
clarity, you're talking about the West Berkshire and Reading okay. issue, um, which has been to and fro through, through the courts. Um, yes, okay, this may be something that you're not familiar with. The I, I'm afraid of I'm sure, and I was going to say that this is probably something that you will want to talk to Mr. Edwards about. Um, I hesitate to, to try and um, summarise uh, what's happened, but the, the written ministerial statement, and I can't remember the date now, uh, was produced saying that um, affordable housing contributions and so on should not be sought from sites of less than 10 dwellings. Um, and that was challenged uh, through the courts by the councils of Reading and West Berkshire and uh, it, it ended up um, in the Court of Appeal. Um, but yeah, Mr. Edwards, I'm sure, will, will be familiar with, with that. Um, and so if you want to run that past him and come back with, with a written response, that would be, uh, that would be very helpful. Could, could we just ask for clarification for the five points um, that we are delivering I'm very slightly lost in this thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I am Whether 
there's enough flexibility in the policy to take into account the individual circumstances of, of different sites. Although there is an element of ambiguity, uh, because of course policy SC6 refers to indoor community facilities, and it's unclear whether that's the same thing as village halls and community centres. Uh, so, I, you know, there are two issues there. One, I think, it's not consistent with national policy, and that the council can't require all the council developments to contribute. And second, Is indoor community facilities the same thing as the children's community facilities? Indoor community facilities is a, is a catch term. As described in paragraph 920, um, there are a real variety of those facilities across the district from village halls, community halls, church halls, public accessible buildings. So that is necessarily flexible to address the circumstances of the district. Coming back to the evidence base, the council certainly believed that the facilities contributions should be secured from all the votes to be many generated. Um, the evidence base demonstrated there was a significant need across the district and 
that's why I put the policy in place. Yes, those issues would be picked up by still, but the policy should be there to acknowledge the need for facilities exists and also retain flexibility for a pre still situation. Uh, what if we don't stop still? So maintaining flexibility again is important, but we think the policy is a necessary one which affects the circumstances of the district. Well, I think it's a question of clarity, really. Um, I think the clarity of the, the language use is important because, because the council needs to avoid the risk of double dipping. Um, so an applicant would need to know is he or she providing an indoor community facility or is he, and she, he or she providing a village hall or community centre? Is he or she providing an indoor community facility from section 6 or a village community centre? So I think clarity is required in order to meet what the end of the end about clear policies. So what you're saying is that um, the, the policy and the um, one, two, three should be the same. Circumstances should again, I think the policy is necessarily flexible. Whether that's an issue for the 123 years uh, would, would be a matter for that examination. But I think this does actually describe aims of the policy, trying to pick up those indoor community facilities, of which I'm afraid there are a variety and it would be difficult to come up with an all encompassing phrase, phrase that picked that up given that variety which is described in paragraph 9. Well, I, I have been appointed to examine this, but uh, not at the present moment. The, the solution would be to change the regulation one, two, three years. So instead of saying virtual community centres, it refers to individual community facilities. Essentially, the same thing. That that would help the council avoid potential problems of double dipping and the limitations. something for us to consider to move towards a civil examination. I think the aim is to acknowledge that our community needs for this kind of facility and ensure those needs are met. If it's a working issue, that could be considered. I think the policy here does try to encompass the range of facilities that are found across the district. Okay, I understand what you're, what you're both saying. And moving on then um, to policy SC7, I think it would be probably useful to consider policies SC7 and SC8 together because they're, they're, they're closely linked. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Jones, you've uh, <laughs> we finally got to your your piece on the agenda. So I'll uh, ask you to start the discussion in the context of my uh, question. Thank you, Mark. Um, and just picking up on some of the points that have already been made that we equally apply to this policy, um, criterion one across the SC7, which is that all housing developments should contribute to the planning space. That's another example of not meeting the test of necessity. Um, the issue being with this particular policy, that whilst the supporting text actually refers at 9.26 about contributions to be sought potentially through a community infrastructure levy where that could take place, it's not included on the regulation 123 list that the council has actually prepared. So outdoor place space and formal open space and new funds, um, they, they don't feature on that list. So 
um, there, there need to be changes made, certainly to align that. And that goes then back to the point that if, if policy doesn't meet the necessity tests, well, what is the council going to do about the provision of, of that joint play space? Um, the, the other point uh, that really wanted to talk about is the flexibility within the policy as well. And taking the two together, we've got um, essentially the, the standards set out. So the standards for the policy set out in a separate policy, which might be as well to be brought together as well. And the council have obviously undertaken survey work where they identify that particular areas of the district will have shortfall or surplus regard to the different types of open space that they're seeking. We recognise that, that the, the space standards are set as a district-wide standard. Um, I think we need to be clear that when we're dealing with individual developments, it might be appropriate and it would certainly be necessary to have regard to those shortfalls and surpluses surfaces where they exist, um, particularly within the immediate area, and the suitability of different sites to accommodate the open space that's set out in policy SC8, and whether or not um, a particular site would be able to accommodate more or less the particular type of the open space. So for example, if a site wasn't able to provide as much outdoor sport, whether or not the policy, as long as you're providing the total open space required, whether or not there's any flexibility in the policy to provide greater open space or allotments or community orchards rather than outdoor sport. So will the council provide flexibility in terms of that portion within the open space standards? Um, it's, it's not clear from the policy policy order. Those are the key points that I want to make in relation to these two policies. Thank you. Perhaps another point made in the, the representation um, of disputing the standards or application again, we seem to be seeking flexibility. The standards are there to ensure that the open space needs of development are met and they provide an appropriate minimum level of provision to ensure that those individual sports play in formal space are needed. They're minimum, they're not stopping anything going beyond those to deliver additional. Um, the council would feel there is flexibility referenced in that, particularly in um, paragraph 9.28, which refers to when the individual science negotiation may take place, when tax space provided on site, any council kind of needs the area, existing provision, and then you can identify the issues. So, council wouldn't agree with making that policy in effect for regarding the patient standards, but it doesn't know if there's a need for paper plant sites because of circumstances and just in and recommend it to you. Uh, 
formal, but it, uh, we, it's important to be very clear in our stance and our policies to make sure that we provide both uh, types of open space facilities to meet the needs of our developments and to provide um, uh, greater flexibility within, within the policy, I think would, would um, water that down at the risk of not providing for um, both the sporting and the I have to say, I, I don't think that this is a, is a, is a major soundness issue, but um, just the way that these two policies work together, um, it, it might be uh, clearer if uh, you had one policy which was linked to a set of standards, which was perhaps a table um, in, in, the, in the plan. Um, it's not entirely clear to me. Um, policy SCA doesn't really do anything on its own. It, um, It's the standards that are sought to be applied by policy SC7. Um, if that's something you, you feel we need to look at for sound reasons, obviously we will um, have to take that away and look at combining policies um, as a particular um, point. But I think I'll be on the flexibility point. I may just um, reassure the council that I wasn't suggesting in any way that we would be looking, and, and I did say it was very much an example, we wouldn't be looking to not provide the more formal types of open space. It was just making sure there was flexibility in terms of the apportionment that is outdoor sport 1.6 hectares, open space 1.2 hectares, and, and so forth, and there's flexibility within that, not about not providing any particular type of open space. Is it a case that you would look at the what the shortfall is in the area where the proposed development would, would take place? I think that is that is um, a factor, a relevant factor. I think if we were, for example, talking about a uh, okay, a major development, um, be that a extension or a new settlement, we would want to make sure that that major new development properly met all the needs that would arise from that development um, itself, rather than necessarily looking to nearby villages, for example. So I think, um, if in, in principle, yes, we would look at um, uh, the amount of Thank you. 
with sites that are over the, 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 the threshold there. There might be, uh, might be an issue there. I'll leave you to give that some thought and uh, perhaps you know, come forward with a, with a form of words for me to consider. Now, I've, the other points that I've uh, raised, uh, there's a point which is very similar to the one that we considered earlier about the relationship with the, uh, the North Stone AAP. Um, there, there seems to be a difference uh, between the policies in the local plan and, and what is <coughs> set out in the AAP. I have not the details before me, but I, I did look at, at it at, at an earlier stage. And again, I think there needs to be some clarity about uh, which policies, any proposals coming forward are going to have to, uh, have to comply with. <coughs> But um, otherwise, I think um, that covers all the points that I wanted to uh, raise on, on that policy. Um, moving on to uh, issue SC8I and policy SC9, I'm, I'm content that um, that question has been overtaken by events. Um, and the remainder of uh, the questions rise largely from Mr. Stevens' uh, representations um, that um, these, these are all uh, issues which are uh, dealt with under other regimes and uh, not appropriate to be included in a local plan. I, I'm not the person to this up, but they were issues that seem important. Okay, well that uh, very speedily deals with, um, with that uh, part of the agenda. I'm just going to have a quick look through and make sure that there aren't any points that I uh, wanted to, uh, to raise because I want to lose the opportunity to do so. No, I'm happy uh, with that, and um, that's the comes to the end of my agenda, and uh, so I'm going to draw today's hearings to a close. Did you want to? Uh, I'm going to sit again after the uh, the number of shots.